So I wanna start the video by saying trigger warning. This video contains information about self-harm because I used to be that person and I would intentionally look these videos up to learn more about how I could self-harm. So anyway, if it's gonna trigger you, I just wanted you to know on the front end. Um, so dealing with bipolar, there is a massively impulsive part of me that when I was as early as 10 years old, uh, was my first time I remember doing it, was to self-harm. Um, it started out when I was 10, I would hit my thighs so that they would bruise. I would burn myself where nobody could see. Um, and yeah, I think those were mainly what I did. But, or pinch myself till I bled, like with my nail or something like that. It kind of started that way. And then I started self-harming more in, well, like after I graduated high school, I think just because I was used to doing that stuff for so long, I kept doing it. And then, um, but I started actually cutting with a razor blade in my 20s. Uh, and I know I told you in a previous video, I was not diagnosed till I was 24 with bipolar. So I was having all these different symptoms and stuff going on and couldn't keep my head above water with it. And I didn't know till I was 24 that I was bipolar, that I have bipolar. Um, so anyway, but once I started cutting with a razor blade, it made it like a euphoric high, like I mentioned impulsivity with my bipolar, and it feels like the impulse to cut would keep me cutting three times a day, round the clock. It was more of like a ritual that I could look at for myself, like it was such a euphoric release when I did it. It was like it either centered me back to my best more stable self um it would either do that or it would just kind of make me more impulsive and more like what else can I do to harm myself short of killing myself because a lot of people are under the misconception that if you self-harm that means you want to die that is not true at all and um it doesn't always mean you're suicidal when you do it a lot of times it's for stress relief or um, to punish yourself. I know I've been in either mode before doing it. Um, and I just want to say I have been clean from this since 2018. February 16th. No, February 18th. So I've been clean for a while off this. So I feel like I can talk about it now. But not that the urge doesn't still strike. Because it is a euphoric high for me when I do it. Um, and it still is intriguing to me to know that I could go down to Dollar General. That was what I always did. I always shopped at Dollar General because uh, they had the cheapest razors. Um, because I would just take apart a little, uh, eyebrow, uh, sharpener and use the razor in there. It was the best size razor. It's easy to hide from people because like my mom would go through my stuff and make sure I didn't have anything to cut with. And take up all the knives and you know, yada yada. Makes you feel real good about yourself when that has to happen. <laughs> but anyway, I know it's for my good. Um, so anyway, I would go to Dollar General. That was my ritual. Like, it kind of became a ritual. I mentioned doing it three times a day. And I seriously was. Like, when I lived in Boston in 2012, I would start my day with it and end my day with it. Uh, if I couldn't do it somewhere in between, it would make me anxious. Um, so it did become a release for me. And I would cut on my left arm, that's why I got it all covered up, looking nice now. It didn't look that good before. Um, and then I, on my leg, on my thigh, where nobody could see. Um, that one came later, after my arm was not really an option anymore. I had ran out of room. Um, so anyway, and plus nobody could see on your leg when you cut on your leg. So, well, with most people. So... So yeah, that was what I did, but I would go to Dollar General and get this uh, eyebrow sharpener, take it apart, um, and a lot of times I would put it back together and just toss it in the drawer because it 
just makes you happy looking at it sometimes. It's all really demented for people that don't understand self-harm or how anybody could ever do that. I know it sounds like I'm being super cash about it, but it is a big deal. I just want to tell my experience with it. So anyway, um, yeah, I was, I'm past it, I feel mostly, although the urge still does strike when I've had like a really rough day and I'm like, man, I could go for some cutting. And I know that's really demented. <laughs> Uh, but I try not to anymore because I refuse to, like, abuse my body that way anymore. Like, I've punished myself enough. Um, because, like I said, it could either be for punishment or for release. Like, I kind of felt both. It just depended on my mood as to which one I was doing it for. But I don't do it anymore. And I haven't done it in five years. Five plus years. So I'm super proud of myself. And feel on the other side of it, mostly. Um, but it's a very real, really shitty thing to go through alone. Um, because I did it for years and nobody ever noticed because I always did it where nobody could look. Um, so, like, just thinking about people that are watching this, like, uh, I don't know, if you're cutting, you know why you do it. And I would just suggest talking to somebody about it, like a professional. Um, because, you know, you're not only harming your body, you're harming your soul when you do it. And I did read this one thing. This is how I justified <laughs> cutting. I read something that said that Native Americans used to cut themselves as ceremonies to release negative energy or negative whatever from their spirit. And so I used that excuse a lot. Like, once I got found out that I did cut, I was like, well, Native Americans did it. Like, they knew what was up with life. <laughs> so <laughs> what if I do it? So what? But I know it's not what I need to do anymore. Um, I pride myself on being clean for so long. And I do call it clean because it seriously was an addiction. It became, at first, a way to punish myself. Like, when I was super young, like 10 like, that's the first time I remember doing that. I was doing it to punish myself because I felt so stupid all the time. Like, people made me feel stupid. But, um, so anyway, it turned into that, into a release and, like, a euphoric high impulsivity. Like, if I even walk by that area in Dollar General or at the store, I would say Dollar General because that's where I shop at. But, but yeah, if I see them, it does, it's like it never goes away. Like, you're like, oh shit, you know what you can do with that, don't you? But it's just having the power to say, I'm going to find other ways to deal with my pain or find another vice that is not as addicting as cutting or harmful as cutting. Because you really are hurting your soul every time you do it. But um, I just want to make sure you guys know to get help if you need help. And... If, I'm sure if my parents had known I started cutting when I was 10, they would have had me into a therapist ASAP. But I was just a super, I was just super good at hiding it. And my parents had a lot going on in their lives. So, um, yeah. I guess that's about it for now. If you're interested in talking about mental health, subscribe. Come back. See me. See you. Bye.